the dividends of faithfulness. Dividends. We speak of div dividends among other things. A dividend is, is a gift. Usually of money. Divided among stockholders. Creditors or member of a cooperative. Um, which comes from surplus profits. You invest in a company and uh, the dividends are the monies that come back uh, as that company earns a profit. Uh, publicly traded companies have to answer to their shareholders. Shareholders invest. Uh, they invest uh, to make money and the money are the dividends of that investment. Amen? And um, uh, they come from surplus uh, profit. Uh, sometimes a dividend is a bonus. It's a dividend, in short, is something extra. Amen. And uh, uh, faithfulness to the God of the Bible yields rich, ultimate dividends. Amen. Amen. But you have to be a stockholder. To get the dividends that God has for us. See, you have to be uh, committed. Not just involved, but committed. The committed believer is the faithful believer. Some of us are involved, but we're not committed. We come to church when it's convenient. We put nothing off to make service. If anything comes up, it doesn't have to be much. Just you turned on the news and they said rain is in the forecast. Can't make it today. Or you, you'd be surprised the things that keep people away from the house of the Lord. A headache, a backache. Things that, I, I, I see things that keep people home from church that doesn't keep them home from work. Uh, they oppress their way to work. And it's it, it just little or nothing now. Uh, and we're, we're, we're out. And, and um, uh, many are committed, but most are involved. You, you're convenience Christians. Say amen. amen. You know I'm telling the truth. And uh, um, I read something that showed the difference between involvement and commitment. It was a little humorous. In fact, I laughed out loud when I read it. And I said, well, I'll share this with the saints. It says the difference between involvement and commitment is like an eggs and ham breakfast. Eggs and ham. The chicken was involved. <laughs> but the pig was committed. <laughs> Amen. Some of you will get that next month. <laughs> D.L. Moody said this. He said, <laughs> it's dawning on people. Oh, the, chick, the, the pig died. <laughs> Chicken had the egg and kept going. Still out there in the yard picking. But D.L. Moody said this, there are very few who in their hearts do not believe in God. But what they will not do is give him exclusive right away. They are not ready to promise full allegiance to God alone. And to get these dividends that the Lord has for us, he's looking for people who will pledge full allegiance. Amen. C.H. Spurgeon said, I feel that if I could live a thousand lives, I would like to live them all for Christ. Even then, I would feel that they are 
too little a return for his great love to me. Most of us feel that we get too little of a return for our servitude to the Lord. When the truth is, I think Moody is right, Spurgeon's is right, that if we could live a thousand lifetimes and live them all for Christ, it would not equal what Christ did for us on the cross. George Herbert said, the resolved man has no cares. When you have made up in your mind that you're going to serve the Lord, and you're fixed in that decision. You have no worries. The worried believer is the vacillating believer. Bible says that the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Nothing brings stability like a made-up mind. Uh, I'm not doubting about the way um, uh, other movements do not look attractive to me. I'm a holiness preacher. That's settled. Praise the Lord. I don't go through um, uh, deep thoughts and conversations within myself and have uh, a lot of uh, uh, indecision on my place in the kingdom. I know who I am in God. And I know that Jesus is real. I know that Jesus is for me, but I, I know a little more than that. Jesus is not just for me. Jesus is for everyone. Jesus died for the world. Amen. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish. Jesus is for you, even if you are not for him. Jesus loves you, even if you do not love him. Jesus wants you to know him. And uh, 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 he wanted me to know him long before I wanted to know him. And he wants you to know him whether you want to know him or not. But once you get to know him and you are resolved, a resolved man, the resolved mind, has no worries, has no cares. The resolved mind says, we're going to do this. Amen. We're going to do this. This certainly appears to be the mind of Caleb. Forty-five years prior to our text, we find the God of the Bible commenting on the attitude, the mindset, the disposition of this man, Caleb. 45 years prior to our text in Numbers 14 and 24, the Lord said this about Caleb. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him and have fully followed, have followed me Fully. Now, this is what the Lord is saying to him 45 years ago. Him will I bring into the land whereunto I sent him to search. 45 years ago, he said, Caleb is different. Bless you, daughter. He says, Caleb has another spirit. That is, he had a different spirit. I'm going to preach. He had, listen to this, a different attitude. Or another translation of the Bible says, uh, he was of another mind. I like what one writer said, said that Caleb was a different kind of man. Praise the Lord. And that trait that made him a different kind of person enabled him to follow the Lord fully. Caleb had the courage of his conviction. Caleb had the courage to resist groupthink. 
Yeah. Caleb had his own mind. Caleb thought for himself. You know, one of the worst things that have happened to our community is that we've become increasingly monolithic. One group of people seem to think that they can think for black folk. And tell us who we should vote for, how we, how we should feel about a certain thing, where we should stand, and if you dare have a different thought, if you dare uh, to think different from our so-called leaders, your authenticity is called into question. I'm glad that Caleb was a courageous man because I'm going to show you in the text that Caleb's thinking went against 99.9% .9 of his own people. His opinion was not popular. Praise the Lord. The rest of his Hebrew brethren said one thing. But Caleb, being a man with his own mind, said enough. Thank you, Jesus. We're in a day now where the world and certain self-anointed people have determined that they can tell all of us how we should feel. The media tries to control our thoughts and Guide our actions. You, you, you're not thinking when a talking head on the media can make you mad or ruin your day or decide for you how you should feel about a thing. We let the media and certain anointed ones talk us as a community a few years ago in standing against an amendment that said marriage is a union between a man and a woman. What could be more fundamentally true than that? The creator of the institution of marriage said that it was between a man and a woman. God made marriage. God said it is not good that the man should be alone. He put the man to sleep. He took a rib from the man. The rib was bone and flesh and blood. And from the flesh, bone and blood, the DNA of the man, God made a woman and then brought the woman to the man to see what the man would call the woman. And the man looked at the woman and said, wow, now this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone. And she's like me, but different. I don't see scales. I don't see fur. I don't see paws. Oh no. I see curves and uh, they're all in the right place. And when Adam saw it, Moses commented and said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cling to his wife and they too, man and woman, shall be one flesh. And with this in the Bible, having never been, cha been changed, we chose to listen and go along with the majority of our people than to have another spirit like Caleb had that would enable him to follow the Lord. I want to tell you today, follow God. 
Amen. I want to say something to you. Don't you put your ethnicity and race ahead of your creator. Somebody said not long ago, I, I'm, I, I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a, uh, uh, I, I, I'm a black man who happened to be a Christian. Not me. I'm a Christian who happened to be a black man. I had no control over that, but I chose the law. He chose me and I chose him. I picked this, God Almighty. Hallelujah. I walked down the aisle and said yes to him. You don't hear me today. Yeah, Caleb had a different kind of spirit. He didn't go along to get along. Amen. This is the mind of a winner. Praise the Lord. To get what the Lord has requires that we possess the ability to serve God in and out of season. When it's in season, the servitude is easy. When it's out of season, the servitude is hard. But the Bible says preach the word and be faithful in season and out of season. Be faithful when the majority of your family are with you. Be faithful to God when they're not. Amen. When the wind is at your back, be faithful. And when the wind is blowing in your face, be faithful. You know Caleb. Let me preach for a minute. Caleb was one of the 12 spies that was sent to spy out the land of Caleb. Land of Canaan, excuse me. Numbers 13 and 6 mentions uh, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. And uh, Caleb was one of the spies. And also Joshua, who in Numbers 13 and 8 is referred to as Oshia. He was one of the 12 spies. And both of these men had the same mindset. Amen. That with the Lord, the land was theirs for the taking. Now, after they spied out the land, it took them about, uh, it took 40 days. They, 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 these 12 men, bad men, strong men, durable men, 40 days, they, they searched out the length and breadth of the land of Canaan. Had to go in and out and not be seen. Had to be wise enough to not get killed. Yeah, they were brilliant men. And they brought back a report. And the report, oh my, it, it was a magnificent report at first. They brought back the report and uh, they said, uh, and they brought back evidence after they finished spying out the land. Verse 23 of Numbers 13 says, and they came to the brook of Eskol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between two upon a staff. Ooh, can you see them grapes? Mm, i like to have one about now. Uh, praise the Lord. It don't matter, seedless or whatever, just a grape. And, uh, and so they had the clusters, and, uh, and they brought of the pomegranates. The pomegranates are very good for you. It's a superfood. I don't like that. Learn to like it. Full of antioxidants that help you live. Good cancer fighter. Say amen. Build your immune system. So we've got to eat something other than pies. <laughs> Amen. Pomegranates and of figs. The place was called the Brook Eskol because of the clusters of grapes which the children of Israel brought 
uh, down from thence and they returned from searching the land after 40 days and they went and came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel because they were waiting for the word to be brought back uh, unto the wilderness of Paran and uh, to Kadesh and brought back word unto them, unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, We came unto the land, uh, whether thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. Milk and honey is a Hebrew idiom uh, that, that means for plenty. Everything you want is over there. Praise the Lord. The land was like a grocery store. It had everything that we would ever want in that land. And not only is it wonderful, but look, y'all. Here's the fruit there. Here's the proof. And the people got happy. The people said, my God, today, woo, this thing is all right. It was worth the trip. And, uh, and look at this. Uh, and uh, the folk got happy. Then they said, uh, I got wrote in my Bible, Scare! I mean, I really do. Verse 28, Scare! Nevertheless, nevertheless, the people, old English, be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. Praise the Lord. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Giants are over there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And we went to the south, we saw the Amalekites, and then we saw them bad Hittites. And the Jebusites and the Amorites, all of them were there but Ike and Tina Turner. <laughs> full of ites. In the land. Are you with me? The Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And uh, when they gave that news, they said, well, we can't do it. The people, their, their spirit just went. Oh. 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 Like seeing something you had your heart on. You just, you just knew that car was yours. Just, oh, my. The, the Lord started speaking to you. Then it showed you the price. Oh. <laughs> your faith just went out the window. So you can't let your faith go out the window. Everything's come at a price. When, the, when they show you the price, when you get the report, don't let your faith go out the window. Grab it. So you got to believe God in this. Are you with me? And so they, they lost uh, faith. And look at what the text says. And Caleb, this is the same Caleb of our text, and Caleb steal the people. Wait, y'all. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, all of Israel, all of Israel is saying we can't do it. All of Israel. All of Israel. We can't go. We can't do this. These giants will kill us. We can't do it. But Caleb steal the people before Moses and said, listen, y'all, let us go up at once. Good God Almighty. And possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Wouldn't it be something if somebody preached like this to black folk and tell us to have our children and don't, don't rely on welfare, don't wait on the government, don't wait on a handout. We're well able. Oh, I can't, we can't get nowhere. We can't get nowhere. Every time we try to get up, somebody white push us down. What's wrong with you? And preachers preach this kind of garbage to the people. No wonder the people can't get delivered. We hear the wrong things. This man said, no, 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 get up. Let's go up there. Let's take this. We are well able to do this. But the men that went up with him, oh my, out of the 12 spies, uh, 10 of them, because Joshua was with Caleb, 10 of them said, we be not able to go up against this people. We can't do it. We can't do it. We can't do it. 
We can't do it. We can't. We can't. You know, our children can't learn like other kids. We can't do it. We can't, we can't, we can't raise the bar of expectation on our sons and expect them to do just as well as other people's children do because they got everything. Oh, we can't do that. Uh, we, we can't expect articulation and A's and achievement. No, 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 we can't do that. We, we can't expect to have a positive relationship with law enforcement. And you got to understand that some of the people who turn to drugs and stuff like that, that's all that they feel that they have. Why are you so hard on them? So that's, that's what's killing us. That, 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 that kind of talk. We need a few preachers who have another spirit. A few Caleb's who will say, we can do this. We can do this. Is that you, Malik? Good to see you. Make sure I see you after service. We can do this. Praise the Lord. But the people said, uh, they, uh, look at this, but the men said, we're not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought back the other ten, an evil report. What made it evil was faithless. What made it evil was that it was a report filled with victimization. It was a report riddled with weakness. It, it, it was a belittling report. That's what's preached to us much more now than anything else. And the mighty black man has gone to be, have become a whip. Descendants of warriors have become punks and sissies and broke-wristed and weak. We abandon our family. We don't raise our children. We leave it all up to the government and have the nerve to be proud. And we come from a strong people. We come from men with powerful backs. Rugged determination to what we are today. To what we are today. Started to say something. And uh, said so they brought back an evil report of them that searched the land unto the uh, searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land, though uh, through the land through which we have gone, excuse me, to search it is a land that eateth up. It's inhabitants thereof. Look, look at this. Look at this. God, ain't no need in us trying. You can't, we can't get nowhere in that land. They ain't gonna let us get anywhere. It eat up the inhabitants thereof. Well, why are people still there? If it eat up the inhabitants, why are people still there? Said, so it, uh, it eat up the inhabitants thereof and, and all the people we saw uh, in it are men of great stature. Well, what are you saying about yourself? Now, I'm not going to let anybody convince me that I'm not somebody. Mm -mm. You can call me arrogant. You can call me whatever you want. But I'm not going to let you talk me into believing that I'm chopped liver. See, I was raised in a different time. I came along in the 70s where black folk, black folk marched and said, I am somebody. Today we march and say, I am nothing. That's, what, that's part of the problem. I'm nothing, so I need to get a handout. I need to get the, everybody else to help me because I can't help myself. But I came along in a day where we were convinced that we were just as smart just as strong and just as able as anybody else. My God, what happened to us? I'll tell you what happened to us. We fell in love with white leftists. We're paying a dear price for our love affair with white socialist, uh, communist, uh, Marxists. They have weakened 
us and talked us into killing our young and broke our men's wrists and they're trying to make our women more and more boyish and make our men weaker. We become matriarchal. I'm going to preach in just a minute. And there we saw giants, the son of Anak, and which come of the, of the giants, and, and we were in our own sight. We were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so were we in their sight. Now, how do you know what you were in their sight? Since you can't see through their eyes. You're not a grasshopper. You're not a grasshopper. You parents, you, don't, you, don't you convince your children that they're grasshoppers. You convince them that they can. That they can. And when you see them put forth an effort, don't make fun of them. Don't you be your child's biggest critic. Straighten them out when they need to be straightened out. But be their largest source of encouragement and let them know that you have their back. And set the bar high. Set the bar high. Set the bar high. Set the bar high. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. These people... They brought back an evil report. And that's all that's said to us now. The least little thing. All you got to do to get us to turn on somebody. Is call them a racist. Well, you know so-and-so don't like black people, don't you? And there we go. We'll dismiss everything else. Because we're just convinced that that is true. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. Look at this. They didn't even hear, they didn't even hear Caleb's uh, optimistic message. They lifted their voices and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would to God that we would have died in the land of Egypt. Or they, they wanted slavery. We would have been better off enslaved. Would to God that we would have died in the land of Egypt, or would to God that we would have died in the wilderness. Wherefore, and why hath the Lord brought us unto this land uh, to fall by the sword, uh, and that our wives and our children should be a prey? What kind of man is that? These are what the men were saying. God brought us out, out here to kill us. Now, uh, the two men were saying, no, we can go in and take this land. But if you notice this, the, the, the negative message always have more, get, gets more attention than the positive message. And now, if I get up here and preach and make you feel like a victim and make you cry and make you convince you that everybody has just done you wrong, you'll be back next Sunday. I can pack you out convincing you that you've done no wrong and that everybody's wronged you and what happened to you is, is worse than what has ever happened to anybody else. See, not to me, people love that message. But if you stand and tell a person, you can make it. The Lord is on your side. Praise the Lord. Come up. Live right. Make wise decisions. Make full use of your time. Praise God. Put God first. And people, oh, you know, he's arrogant. You know, he's too hard. You know, the problem with Wooden is he don't understand that not everybody can. Everybody can. Everybody can do better. For the God we serve, he is a way maker. He is a way maker. You may not be able to do what someone else can do, but guess what? There are people who can't do what you can do. The negative message got the attention of the people. I got to preach and get out of here now. Got the attention of the crowd. And they're all, they're ready to go back to Egypt. And it's been better for us to have died. And verse 6 says, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, 
which were of them that searched out the land. They rented their clothes. They stood up. They arguing. They tore their clothes. And wait a minute. Oh, this is a fight going on here. They stood up and said, and they said unto the, to the company of the children of Israel, saying, the land which we possess, that, that we pass through to search it, is an exceeding good thing. In other words, this thing is worth the shot. It's worth taking a chance on. Listen, listen, listen. There are risks in achieving. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about the mind of a winner. There are chances that you have to take to go from one level to the next. Can I get a witness here? And uh, I feel something. I said I feel something here. And then uh, he said, this is a good land. And then I heard him say, and if the Lord delight in us. If the Lord delight. And what does the Lord delight in? The Lord delight in us being faithful. The Lord delights in people who trust in him. If the, the Lord delights in obedient, obedience, if the Lord delight in us, then he will give us this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Honey, only rebel ye not against the Lord, neither fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Sunbeams. Bread, wonder bread, bread, bread. A good old uh, hot as biscuit. Somebody said nature's plus. You name it, they're bread for us. What you call them, bulb? <laughs> oh, with the, with the blueberries in it? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're bread for us. They're bread, they're bread for us. Yeah, we we can look, they're bread, they are a meal. And then he said something spiritual. Because they had a different spirit, they could see something. See, people who have a different spirit and who serve the Lord see things differently than people who do not. Notice what they said. They said their defense is gone. See, now now you done gone from uh, being to the earthly level to cosmic. See, the, he realized that God had lifted the defense of the land of Canaan. And now Canaan is ours for the taking because their defense is gone. Since we're entering flu season, we got to cut out all that, sh shake your neighbor's hand. So point at your neighbor. <laughs> and tell your neighbor their defense is gone whatever it is the enemy is coming against you with whatever the time is right for you to claim your blessing their defense is departed from them and the Lord is with us be not afraid of them but the congregation look at this bathe them to stone them and let me tell you what happened. Long story short, God cursed them. God cursed them and told them you're going to wander in this wilderness for 40 years. And everybody in this congregation who is 20 years old and upward, you are going to die in the wilderness. You will not enter into the land of Canaan because, and, and David wrote about it. David, David called it the provocation, the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, saw me, proved me, saw my works. And, and the Lord says uh, that I, they swore in his wrath that they would not enter into his rest. And so he said, you've seen enough. You've seen me destroy Pharaoh's army. You've seen me move on your behalf. You've seen me work things out. How dare you say that I can't do this? So since you insist on being faithless, so I don't waste time trying, look, I'm going to preach to you and try to get you to believe. 
But now, if you're going to argue with me about believing, now, I want you to believe God. Yeah, well, I, I want to believe it, but let me tell you about this. All right, well, I want you to believe God. Well, well, let me tell you about that. Now, we ain't going to stand here and talk all day about that. You're going to either believe God or not believe God, and I'm going on to somebody. I want to pray for somebody with some faith because at a certain point, you got to decide. I told you, the resolute mind has no cares. At a certain mind, you got to decide. I am going to believe God. They rebelled against him. And the Lord says you're going to wander in this wilderness until you die. Your carcass shall fall. Verse 29 of chapter 14. Your carcass shall fall in the wilderness. And all that, that were numbered of you according to your whole number. From 20 years old and upward. Which murmured against me. Doubtless you shall not come into the land. Concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein. Except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. Why Caleb? Verse 24 tells us, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and have followed me fully. I got a, I got a blessing for him. Him will I bring into the land Wherein to he went. See, when he went in to spy out the land, all of them went in, but they went in different territories. It says to Caleb, the land that you went to spy out for me, I'm going to give it to you and give it to your seed. What you make happen for the kingdom, God will make happen for you and for your children. And for your children's children. I'm living, praise the Lord, for the Lord to bless me. I'm living for the Lord to bless my children. I'm living for the Lord to bless my grandchildren. I'm living for the Lord to bless their children. When I'm, done, when I'm dead and gone and off the scenes, I want the seeds that I have sown to come up in my grands and my great grands and so forth and so on because we serve a God who visits the third and fourth generations. We serve a God who remembers. And I'm saying, oh Lord, remember me. Remember what I did. Remember what I did for my children and for my family. What a mighty God. What will he remember about you? What will your descendants, what blessings will they get from the Lord for your behavior? What have you done for the kingdom? What have you done for anyone else? What have you done that wasn't self-centered? What moves have you made that wasn't a move to move you up in your career in this church? God tests the motives of people. And if the motive is not right, the work won't be blessed. I got to preach. Uh-huh. He says, verse 32, but as, as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be waste in the wilderness. After the number of days in which you search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall you bear your iniquities. Even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. Can I get a witness? Mm, mm, mm. Now, see, God said, I'm not going to, I'm going to bring this to pass. I'm not going to break my word. So now, in our Amen. We find this man, Joshua, with another spirit. Motivated, can I get a witness, by the promise of God. God's promise kept him strong. God's promise not only kept him strong, but God's promise kept him alive. As a matter of fact, if I dig should digress just a little more, then I'm going to land a plane. Caleb had his leaders 
anointing. If you look at Deuteronomy, praise the Lord, chapter uh, 34, and verse 5 says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley, in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth his sepulchre, knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural force abated. At 120, he was in excellent health and had excellent sight. This mighty man of God. And we find Caleb here with that blessing on him. And so Caleb stands before Joshua, are you with me? Said the children of Israel, the children of Judah came before Joshua. I'm in my text now. Joshua 14 and 6. And Gilgal and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said to Moses concerning me when we were in uh, Kadesh Barnea. You know the promise. Isn't that something? 45 years later, Caleb hadn't forgotten the promise God made. Amen. When we traveled and searched out the land, you know the promise that God made me. The Lord told me that the land, the area wherein I went to search it, that he was going to give me that land. Now what's interesting, if you go back and study and you read it uh, uh, when, when you get home, Numbers 13 23 through 29, the area that they described was the area that God promised Caleb. Hebron, the land, the valley of Eschol, where all them fruit and all the, uh, the figs, praise the Lord, and the giants were. God promised Caleb big dividends. Amen. I think you would have to agree that Caleb was invested. Praise the Lord. 45 years of servitude. And I'll tell you something else about Caleb. Caleb was very committed. Because, you know, most people uh, are committed when you and them, I'm going slow, run together. And as long as both of you are pretty all right with each other's appointments, as long as you're fine and you feel like the pastor or the leader is dealing with you equally, you all are good friends. The pastor's the man of God. And your friend is your friend and you want your friend to make it. But you know, in life, People don't run together the whole time because every man has his assignment. Every woman have their own journey. Two men gave a good report. But Moses didn't pick both men to be his successor. Didn't make both men his first. He picked one man. Joshua and told Joshua, study it in Deuteronomy chapter 31. Said, now you will be the leader that will take them over, amen, to the other side. Am I preaching? And uh, in verse 7, and Moses called Joshua and said unto him, said unto him in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of a good courage. For thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. He told him that you're going to be my successor. Well, 
How did Caleb feel about it? Well, we know how Caleb felt about it. Because the text tells us that Caleb followed the Lord wholly. Caleb never backslid. Caleb understood that that was the promise that God gave to Joshua. I'm going to serve until God brings to pass the promise that God made me. See, I'm not getting any amens now. You see, now you done got quiet. I was good. I was good. Now you're not saying anything. But you got to understand that God controls people's lives. And sometimes, amen, the Lord may pick one for this thing. And he may pick another, another one for that. But if God picks someone and gives them that assignment, you just do yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do what the Lord have called you to do and you serve with joy. And sometimes it doesn't look fair. So you may be able to make the argument that it's not fair. Caleb said it is recorded that Caleb did more talking that day than Joshua did, but Joshua got that appointment. But Caleb wasn't holding on for that appointment. He was holding on for what the Lord promised him. I don't want what God has for you. I don't want what God has for you. I don't want what the Lord has promised you. I want what the Lord promised me. Praise the Lord. And, and the Lord will operate in the timetable that he chooses to operate in. Could I get a few people to shout something? You know what Caleb did when Joshua, when Joshua got it? Caleb followed. Worked with the program. And kept raising his family. Kept on serving. Kept on doing like he was supposed to do. Kept on being faithful. Look at your neighbor and point at him. Tell him to keep being faithful. Just keep obeying God. Mm, sometimes you may look overlooked. And sometimes it may not even seem like you overlooked. Sometimes you may be overlooked. But we serve a God who knows how to make things right. When the time is right, he'll make things right. Sometimes he'll let you get shunned. He'll let you get passed over. He'll let you get left out because there's some things that he want to work out in your spirit. And he knew get letting you be left out would surface some of those bad things that you didn't even know were in you. And you got mad and called the pastor a a ninja and you got mad and got ready to leave the church and that's why the Lord let it happen to show you that you're not as strong as you think you were and said now I want to work this out of you because I have elevations for you but I can't bring that junk to the next level and I got to get it out of you now before I bring you into the land of promise because if you go in it with that trait you're going to mess up your own promise so God knows Knows how to let things happen. Joshua got it. Caleb didn't. But Caleb went home to his wife and said, Come on, honey, let's make a baby. Let's keep on living. Let's keep on going. Because God made me a promise, and the God I serve, He cannot lie. Yeah! Yeah, Lord! Somebody let me hear you say thank you. Thank you. You just got to hold on to the Lord's promise. Well, now we find 45 years later, we find them in the land of Canaan divvying out territory, giving out the inheritance. Now it's time for the tribe of Judah to get theirs. Now some people have suggested that it was racism that, that Joshua was going to overlook Caleb. But you see, it's hard to argue that for there were other tribes who have not gotten their inheritance yet. So when Caleb came with Judah, Caleb actually stepped in front of his fellow Judite brethren for he was the representative of the tribe of Judah 
and he said to Joshua he said to his friend they had been through a lot they'd wandered in the wilderness for 40 years they wandered until Miriam died they wandered until the other spies died they wandered until Aaron died they wandered until that whole generation died and they wandered in the wilderness until Moses died they went over to the other side and they fought for five years against the inhabitants of the land of Canaan you see when you get get your blessing that don't mean that you still won't have to fight a little bit they went in Canaan and it took them five years to subdue Canaan 40 years in the wilderness five years in Canaan but the Lord watched over Joshua and he watched over Caleb and here they are now on that day and John Caleb speaks up and said you know the promise that Moses made me in Kadesh Barnea you were there when Moses said the same land that I walked in that I spied out that God was going to give it to me and that he was going to give it to me because I wholly followed the Lord my God somebody shout be faithful be faithful faithfulness will pay off after a while I wish I had a praying church faithfulness will bless you in the end and I heard him say here I am 45 years later here I stand and I want you to know that I'm as strong today as I was 40 years ago I'm as strong today as I was 45 years ago for the Lord have kept me and I want to tell somebody good God almighty the Lord is going to keep you the Lord is releasing an anointing that will heal your body that will revive you again that will give you back your vigor he's able to put running in your feet clapping in your hands he's able oh, he's able somebody praise him praise him like you did five years ago praise him like you did when you first got saved yeah yeah oh. Get your Caleb's anointing. Get your Caleb's anointing. Yes, sir. Higher. Higher. Oh. Mm. I want you to grab somebody and just prophesy to them. Put your hand on his shoulders and tell him, may the years be good to you. As times pass, may the years be good to you. If you live holy, the years will be good to you. If you walk upright, ah, the years, they'll be good to you. If you praise the Lord, ah, ah, the years they'll be good to you somebody say yeah 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 Lord. upper room praise him upper room praise him yes sir yes sir do I have anybody who can still say, I got running in my feet, clapping in my hands. Good God Almighty, this man stood there and said, now give me this mountain 
I know that the giants are over there and I've been waiting. I've been chomping at the bit for 45 years cause I wanna try my hand against theirs. I wanted to fight them 45 years ago but y'all wouldn't let me. So now release me and if the Lord be with me, can I get a witness? If the Lord be with me, oh, I can make it. Good God Almighty, you can make it. If the Lord is with you, it doesn't matter who leaves you, who talks about you, who turns on you. You ought to just make sure that the Lord is with you. Because if God is with you, good God Almighty, if the Lord be for us, what doesn't matter if someone else is against us, if God is on your side, the devil can't stop you. He's still the mighty one. He's still the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's still a battle axe in the time of a storm. He's still a battle axe in the time of battle. A shatter in the time of a storm. Oh, oh, he's still able. Yeah, I heard Isaiah say, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, and his ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. He's still a prayer answering God. He's still a way making God. He's still a life changing God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. If you want your dividends, Praise him for him. I want a few saints who are invested. If you're invested, give God praises. If you're invested, how many years do you have in? How long have you been serving him? How long have you been waiting for him? Oh, how long have you been paying your tithe? How long? Oh, yeah, yeah, Lord. Woo! Say what you want. I'm invested. I'm too far gone. Been out here too long. Been saved too long. Been in the church too long. I've shed too many tears. Too far to turn back now. Good God Almighty. 45 years I've been waiting. Now give me this mountain. Joshua blessed him and gave him the mountain. And if you read chapter 15, 14 and down, you will see that Caleb took his family and some men and went over in there and began to kick and take names. Woo, he was glad with his, with his 85 year old son. I, oh, I've been waiting for this. I believe somebody here been waiting. You haven't been waiting 45 years, but you've been waiting all week to just release and give God a praise. To just tell him something for how good he's been to you, for where he's brought you from, for what he's done for you. Hallelujah. To show the devil, you can't block my praise. You can't take my joy. You can't have my family. This is war. War. Woo.
what he did? First thing Caleb did was he went and found the giants. I ain't gonna go jump on no little shorties. Let me go find the giants. You, you hey, them. We're driving all y'all out first. You've been walking around here. You've been here for 45 years on credit. This is my land. This is the attitude that we got to have against drugs, against the enemy trying to take our children, the onslaught of the devil. That's a certain mindset. That had a Caleb mind. Don't listen to people who don't have a, a, a fighter's mind. They'll rob you of your ability to fight. They're losers. They're losers. Some of you never look like a fighter. You never show no determination. All you look is sad. Oh, that makes a pretty person ugly and a big man small. I knew of a guy who had muscles. It looked like he belonged in uh, 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 Muscle and Fitness magazine, but he was weak. And every time you talk to him, he's whining about something with all them guns and big chests and all that stuff just as weak as water. Oh, I got to the point where when I was seeing him around town, if I saw him before he saw me, I went the other way. To all the wasted sides, wasted biceps, wasted triceps, got all that tied to a little thinking man. And then I've run into men Small in stature. Not very heavy. Not a muscle to be found. But they knew in whom they believed. And they knew that God was able. And they knew that the Lord is a mighty God. A true God. And an everlasting king. You know what? I want to hang around that guy. I can learn something from him. Because he's a warrior. He's a warrior. The Lord has dividends. The Lord has big blessings in store for you. you, gotta, you gotta, but you got to be insistent upon your mountain. But, and I close with this. For those who understand how to study the Bible. Anytime something is constantly repeated. That's the central point. Now we can preach about the mountain. We can preach about his health. We can preach about uh, what he did. But the, the, the thing that God wants us to get is what the Lord kept saying. He wholly followed the Lord. That's the refrain. That's the message. If you get everything else but that, you didn't get it. He wholly followed the Lord. It wasn't touch and go. It wasn't hit and miss. It wasn't show up when it's convenient. Not show up when it's inconvenient. He wholly followed the Lord. He wholly followed the Lord. See that part won't make you shout. He wholly followed the Lord. That's not that pretty. But that's the key. And some of us, when we're getting close to what the Lord has for us, it don't take but one person to say something to us that we don't like, and there you go home for six months. You just set everything right back again. You can't grow like that. Lord getting ready to bless you, but you can't come to church unless your buddy comes. You won't like this. You can't come unless your spouse comes. Your, love your husband. Love your wife. Love your family. But they're not God. You're supposed to be able. You're supposed to be able to come to church. Well, we go as a family. What else do you do as a family? Do you go to work as a family? That's a whole other thing you don't do as a family. Because you can't. Now, we serve the Lord on an individual basis. Both of us are saved, but, but she got saved for her. I'm saved for me. Now, we're saved together, but you got to wholly 
I'm not getting any help. I'm, you got to holy follow the Lord. And you know what? I want her to because I don't know how long. None of us know how long we have here. You can walk out of here health as a lock and, and go through the stoplight and you're gone. You're dead and gone, and you've already trained them not to come to church unless you're with them. Well, they ain't coming back, because you ain't coming back. No, no, there has to be a release. There has to be. You got to get the point. So I preached to you, didn't I? Yes, sir. Hollered and everything. Yes, sir. God blessed us, didn't he? Yes, sir. It's, good, it's good preaching, right? Yes. Holy follow the Lord. And notice this. The Lord said that about him. 45 years ago. First time we read that was in Numbers. We read it again in Joshua 45 years later. So that means when they came out of Israel, when they came out of uh, Egypt, he was wholly following the Lord. See, the, the trip was what, 11 days? The wilderness? It was an 11-day trip. They made it last 40 years. They, they were there. K Kadesh Barnea, you could... They went and spied out the land. They're there. They're there. They made it. They're in there. But they wouldn't believe. So the Lord said, all right. All right. Oh, you're going to believe. You're going to wander in this wilderness. Going around the same circle. The wilderness wasn't 40 years long. It took them uh, 40 years. The wilderness was so big, it was 11 days. But they would not obey God. And some of us, oh, oh, we're just in. Oh, we're just in. We're going to walk a trench. We're going to put a trench in the floor, in the wilderness, going round and round. Because we won't wholly follow the Lord. So we're chasing our tail in the wilderness. Oh, and, and listen, and, and here's, the, here's the land of promise. It's, it's right here on this map, but you can't get there because you won't follow God. You won't follow God. Oh, you're going around and around. And if you just listen to the Lord, bam, now you're where the Lord wants you to be. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I want to pray. I don't want to pray. Uh. Give me this mountain. That's, that's, that would be a good one. And we'll leave so fired up. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I want to pray for those who want to recommit to the Lord. What made these extraordinary things happen for this man was his commitment. It was his commitment. It was his commitment. It wasn't that he was of the tribe of Judah because a whole lot of Judites died in the wilderness. A whole lot of them. Miriam was Moses' sister. She died in the wilderness. Aaron was Moses' brother. He died in the wilderness. Moses was Moses. He died in the wilderness. Two men made it in. And the generation from uh, zero to 19. From 20 years old up, all of them died. Lord, I want to recommit to you. How you doing, dear? I want to recommit to you. Everybody who wants to recommit, because you want God's dividends, come to the altar at this time. Hallelujah. And if you uh, are going to come, Come fast. And see, recommitment is not rededication in terms of getting saved or, or over. But Lord, I see that I'm not wholly following you. I want to come up. Some of you, I could pick you out and say, get down here. Because you don't wholly follow the Lord. I know you don't. You know you don't. You don't. Praise the Lord. But we got to. If you want to be able to as time roll on do you know we're living in an aging society 
to and kill all the babies in America growing old. So that's 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 the way things are going now. And 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 uh, uh, you, we're gonna we're gonna need an anointing. Every time we turn the TV on, there's a new condition out. I think they make up some of these conditions because the symptoms are too vague. I mean, you can't miss. Do you have a headache every now and again? Do you ever go through time when your energy is low? Do you ever feel like this or feel like that? Of course. Of course. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Those of you who mean this and you mean business, you'll walk in dividends. Unlike what you believe, what you thought, let me say it right, would happen for you. The Lord will keep his promise. The Lord will. See, there is no, none of us get to set the terms. The Lord sets the terms. Ain't nobody that bad. Nobody that strong. Nobody that important. God sets the terms. At least five times. Four I know. Perhaps five times. Three in the text. And I think two other times. It is mentioned that Caleb served him with his whole heart. With his whole heart. He was committed. 